Right, welcome back. Last time, we managed to conquer yet another province. And I also decided to go ahead and do my best, level best to force through two reforms. Specifically, um... I forgot what the second one was. Um... Oh, this hasn't updated yet. Okay, so factional, bureaucratic factionalization, and something else. I think it was, um, sale of offices. Yeah. Ban the sale of offices. One in order to increase the influence of the bureaucrats, which is rather low because of how powerful the nobles are, because these two new provinces have extremely powerful nobles, because uh, the original owner, Raymond Verden, uh, kept empowering the nobles to try and make them happier. Which apparently they didn't do a very good job of, because the nobles are, are at around uh, 20 loyalty. This one's at 15. Yeah. It's going to take a while for their power to go down. Though thankfully this province in this province is going down almost one percent a year. It's rather quick, so it's probably going to end up taking time. Hmm, nine seven seven. Yeah, okay, so it's traveling my land. Though I think trying to boat across all of Jutland might be a little bit slower. Until we get proper harbored. Eh, something to handle later. So yeah, and the process of those reforms, so now that I'm, I'm now at minus two stability. I'm also hoping to end up doing some tax reform. <laughs> yeah, I'm entirely uncertain if I can manage to reach the... <laughs> to gain three stability on... Four years. And also, my finances are having quite a bit of fun, so. Well, great times are ahead for all. Oh well. My economy should improve as I'm unlikely to go to war again that soon. Ah. Yeah, it lost about a thousand manpower in total. Pretty much the only direction I can go right now is Lauenburg. Thing is, I need 4,000 troops, of which I don't even have the force limit for three, because of uh, losses in the war. Because the, there are two other directions. Denmark, Norway, which is already a terrible idea, because on their own, they already have four times as many troops as I do. Then we get into the fact that they have Sweden as a subject. Also has Gotland as a subject, which already is three, three quarters of their troops, plus all of their allies. Although most of them aren't particularly amazing. And there's Pomerania. It's allied with the Emperor and Meissen. So. In a defensive war, that's another 18k troops on top of their 5k. I can barely fight them one-on-one. -on -one. Well, I can barely fight them with Hamburg's assistance. Also, Hamburg turned into a monarchy. So, Lubeck's now the leader of the Trade League. Of which the only... <laughs> ...member is Hamburg. So, you can guess how well that's going. Though it might get rebuilt again with, say, Mecklenburg, Schwerin. Though I highly doubt Lauenburg's going to get involved because, well, enemies of both Hamburg and Lübeck, and also rivaling Lübeck too. Oh, and I don't like them either. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, time to send an insult to Bremen for more power projection because in the peace deal I decided to go ahead and humiliate Bremen Werden. Nothing else I could really do with them. I can't use this territory, and I don't think vassalizing them would honestly be helpful in any way, shape, or form. So.
Oh yeah, right, right. Something I wanted to do was set up a spy network. Because I am planning on eventually invading Lauenburg. As that's the only direction I can go. After that, I'm going to have to start focusing on... The only way to expand my population will be depleting the obvious means of expanding my economy. Or allowing natural growth to do its thing, but... That is slow and somewhat dangerous, in general, so... Yeah, that's kind of big time. So I should also start up an industry. Though I should also say this, it should be an industry that I have do not fulfill yet. Or, I don't have enough of yet. I can already say this, I don't think I have enough military goods. Oh yeah, I demand my training requirements are three military goods. Looks like I'm not gonna be able to increase my force limit anytime soon, so. I simply cannot afford that much money, so... Alright. Not that much money spent on that stuff, so... Uh, let's see here, okay, so... So I probably should... Right. The problem definitely has room for 10k urban individuals. Urbanites. So the question really is more of what kind of slot do I want to fulfill? Okay, so always, always, always. Really, you can build your ship industry anywhere. <laughs> There's a limited quantity of urban industries available. Potentially available. The question is, what do I lack? Military goods is definitely some, something that's expensive. But of all the industrial goods, it's the most expensive. Well, basic industrial goods. There's also luxury goods, which are far more expensive. But I can only do if I have five urban development anyway. Luxury requirements has five urban development. So you need a nice and prosperous city in order to actually specifically produce them. Although I will also say this, regular industries of any kind produce a small amount of luxury goods on the side. I think I need, yeah, industrial, yep, okay. All right. Time to set up an armament industry in this province. It's going to need investment though, at some point. I also want to try something else again. Because last time I tried to open up a higher learning industry, but it didn't work in my capital. Let's try this again. Excellent! It has successfully done so. I'll give it some time in order to adjust properly. And then make an investment into knowledge. Knowledge industry. Oh, I probably should check to see if anything expired, which it probably has, and it's several days in. Yay. Not the best time for that, isn't it? So, yeah, space bombs and characters, promotion, expansion, anti corruption campaign, unlawful imperial territory. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Overlooking tenant abuse. There we go, some stability. And I'm getting about 10% every year, every month, every month, yeah.
Yep, anyway. And also, provincial corruption is going down rapidly, which I'm going to need because, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this province, I don't care about corruption. At least not for the next couple of years. Plus, these two provinces has, have far... The nobles are far too powerful and far, far too disloyal. So they're not a good thing to have. They raise autonomy, making taxes more difficult to obtain, along with some other stuff that's, you know, fun to deal with. I think I now finally have a positive balance again. Nope, never mind. Army maintenance is still impressively expensive. Our raised regiment costs, to be specific. Yeah, state's finances are... Oh. Okay, so they're actually doing fine. Okay, so army maintenance dropped because I got rid of it. Yeah, it was the penalty from going over the force limit. Alright, okay. Still, 0.12 ducats a month? That reminds me of the very early days. Those were not good times for that. At all. Oh, let's see. A low Saxon theolo theologian and philosopher, Martin Luther, after a remarkable commitment at university and a Bachelor of Arts degree and being ordained a priest, has begun preaching in Hyde. His teachings, however, smell sulfur, being in direct opposition to the Catholic Church of Dithmarsh. Some of the precepts appear influenced by Lutheran heretics. The core tenets of their doctrine was poverty of the clergy, universal priesthood, gospel and vulgar tongue, celebration of the communion under both kind for all, punishment for mortal sins regardless of stature. We have three possible policies regarding these Lutherans. Supporting a minority will let it grow faster and prevent you from initiating an inquisition against them. Accepting a minority, a middle ground solution. Silencing a majority will help make them grow slower, but will also make them more restless. About 10% of the Catholic population converts to Lutheran in the province, and 5% of the neighboring ones. Active preacher strength, 5%. Now that's not going to affect the cities. <laughs> The Irvinites, they're all Jewish. For whatever reason. Oh, yes, and how is. Yes, the religious education seems to be doing fine. The higher education still doesn't seem to exist insofar as the cane is concerned. Alright then. Honestly, um, Lutheranism is beginning to... I think they just swapped to Luther entirely. Urban production efficiency, yeah, missionary strength, uh, technology cost reduction. Idea cost reduction, monthly autonomy chain reduction, yearly repulsive tradition up. But reduced tolerance to the true faith. This Catholic provides um, an extra diplomat, extra missionary strength. I don't care about that either. An extra possible advisor, increased tolerance of the true faith, increased institution spread, but also increased admin tech cost and interest per annum. I think it might actually be better just to go Lutheran. I'm not going to get very many benefits. Though I probably should do stuff to probably should use the papal influence before doing the, the actual conversion. Oh, I did not expect to actually straight up convert. I uh, can't let's select aspects of faith. Enforce religious unity. No religious law. Spread. Uh, 
Okay. Don't really care too much. Ah. It's immediately converts to majority. Alright, I wasn't really expecting that, but okay. Also... Respect to face stuff is not something that's an actual thing here. Okay, so, the religion of the country has changed, so might need to instability. Universal priesthood, pending a clergy gravity effect. A general purgatory, dogma, no effect. No baptism, religious unity, minus 10%, Bible and vernacular, minus 10%, increases spread of religious shift. Spiritual power only. Reduced clergy power and loyalty, consubstantiation, dogma, no effect. Prayers to saints is idolatry. Legitimacy, minus 1%, stability, cost minor. Percent. Diverse legal. Coming up. Possibility to diverse divorce consort. I'm guessing this is planned. Married priest, same with planned effect on quote gravity. Create through church, increased tolerance of unknown religion, belief in Trinitarianism, dogma of effect. Clergy poverty. Pending reduction of population wealth sift into the clergy. Eventually, yeah. No primacy. Face hierarchy plus one. Communion to laity under both kinds. Face spirituality plus one. Mysticism pending effect. Local tenants. Indulgences condemned. Yearly corruption minus one percent. Legitimacy minus one percent. Ursary authorized. Interest minus five percent. Inflation reduction plus two and a half percent. Regulated. Parish registers, manpower recovery C plus one percent, signing condemned, pending effect, absenteeism condemned, global missionary strength plus one percent, clergy power plus two and a half percent. Ah, there's the stability drop. Stability should remain high though, eventually. You didn't even get to fifty percent. So, let's grab tech. First, centralization of power. I might need a diplo points for something, so I'm not going to grab that. Battlefield ambulances. So, okay, so first centralization of power, yearly centralization plus 0.01, and allows force march, which I rarely ever use anyway. Battlefield ambulances, military tactics plus 0.25, cavalry shock plus 0.2. able to do um, tax reform of both direct and indirect taxation. Plus, I've got plus one stability, so I'm not going to annoy anyone outside of potentially rising bureaucratic corruption. <laughs> but yeah, I could really use this stuff. More options would increase the efficiency of my taxation setup. Plus, I think I should be able to... Well, so long as my state reach... Okay, so it does plus 30% times state reach. So, so long as my state reach... Well, I'm reducing it by 10. So, so long as the state reach is above 33%, it will actually be more efficient. And it's supposed to reduce mana cost of straight direct taxes, at least I figure it does. Yeah, it's gonna cost for stability, so further reform this. Oh, you can even further reform the things straight themselves. Hmm. 
<laughs> hmm. I could go another level immediately. Sure, what? Oh. Oh, there's a button to check on National Military. Hmm. Okay, and that should be good for now. <laughs> um, it seems we've done the exact same thing as we did to the start of this session. <laughs> Except this time, it's a bit different. Alright, let's restart the Grindle. That's enough to get me up to negative two stability. Provincial corruption is going down. Tax income is increasing because... Oh, that's actually nice. Apparently, the... There's no tax farming going on. No property income is low. So I should still be making money. Okay. It's gonna take some time for commercial corruption to go down though. Still, all of this is good. Very good. You know, I still must admit I could most of my money off to peasants, which I would prefer to not be the case. Prefer better to, you know, tax like the wealth of the aristocrats, because, well, that's where they get a lot of their power. Uh, I don't like that. Oh well. Right, so. Let's see here. Um, power. Yeah, okay. So. I have gone ahead and actually changed religions to Lutheran. Because I figured the production efficiency would be way better. Along with the yearly Republican tradition gain. And the reduced technology and idea costs. And the reduced monthly autonomy change. The only thing that's not great is missionary strength, which is the same anyway. As well as tolerance of the true faith being reduced by a lot. Yeah. Of course, I am running into issues lately with low stability <laughs> and hefty amounts of separatism. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to use... Um, not provoke revolt, but harsh treatment. Thankfully, it only costs 27, so I could do that pretty easily. Yeah, so I did two major reforms, direct taxation and indirect taxation. I was hoping to try to do more, but it turns out that my uh, executive couldn't handle that much. So, yeah, increased power costs are the first else. But we've already seen the first effects of the increased tax efficiency. Plus, new taxes are available, so I can actually go ahead and just do the tax code delegation. And then make my own uh, preferred adjustments. Just specifically remove the manpower stuff in the new provinces. Because I want to keep my military size stable until I can get some better things in place. Another thing is that the inheritance tax is now available, which is excellent, because taxing the elites. Yes. Oh, property tax is also available. Well, no, actually, but then... Substantive excise. Uh, actually, wait. Let me just review rights and reforms. Okay, so yeah, property tax, inheritance tax... 
as well as substances excise. So yeah, property tax, inheritance tax, substances excise. Which of which there's a lot of, so that indicates to me that these are going to be particularly efficient, at least in certain areas. And should give me plenty of money, which will help pay for stuff that I need. I've also started setting up a industry inside this new province, because it's the only one without an urban population, so I might as well fill up some gate. Oh, and it's an armaments industry, because... Well, um, my total production of armaments in my capital province isn't even enough to fulfill my army's needs, so... Yeah, I definitely need more military goods. Definitely. I've also started opening up the higher education industry, though I really, really am having troubles getting enough um, literates, literati, to agree. Oh well, they are producing plenty of knowledge, though. Far more than the religious education can hope to be, so. Now, it's not like anything else needs the literati labor type. And they come directly from the residents. So, high wages there go straight to the residents, too. Which helps make them more money. And, well, keeps their living stable, more or less. No, size. Yeah, population size. A bit more stable. But yeah. We all know that not much has really occurred outside of, uh, wait. No, oh, just refreshing some stuff. Yeah, pretty much. But the chaos of the Reformation is slowly spreading. For example, England just went from Wycliffeite straight to Lutheran. Wales is falling to pieces. I think they've been forced to take um, Lutheran by the English. Scotland also went Lutheran. And so did Sweden. Although this is already a bit of a mess over here. Scott went Lutheran too for some reason. Aren't you supposed to be Orthodox anyway? Eh. I do wonder why the Ottomans have specifically this province, if not anything else. Okay then. Okay, these two provinces. For some reason. Maybe just to screw over Austria? I mean, it's not a terrible reason, but still, it shouldn't be the only reason. Oh, and I probably should... yeah, okay. I'd like to maintain that for the boosted power gain for a little while longer, because, well, it's, uh, it's points. I could use those. Always. It's going to take time, though, in order for... Stability to improve, which is questionable at the moment. The grain dole is going to help bring it up to negative one. It's not going to be enough. And it's going to take time for this to improve. The Republican tradition again. So thankfully, it's going to go reasonably quickly, despite the stability level. All the buffs that I do really help in that regard. That's going to reset some of the gains that I've made in autonomy in a couple of provinces. But yeah, reducing autonomy is pretty good, and then I can get cheaper taxation. But yeah, that's... I've gone on long enough. Definitely. 
I'll see you again next time. Until then, bye.